I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyker is retired. We call this chapter the silent service, the trout at the rainbow's end. It deals with one of the few submarine exploits which the Navy Department allowed to be publicized during the war. Because after the fall of Corregidor, it could hurt no one. Many of you may know the bare bones of this story, but very few people know why the USS Trout accomplished what it did. You and I are going to join her crew, the easy way, from a comfortable chair. Let's get underway. At Pearl Harbor in early January 1942, the USS Trout was making frantic preparations for a special mission. They were loading anti-aircraft ammunition, plenty of it. All of her extra torpedoes had been removed to make room for it. The only fish she carried were in the torpedo tubes. Even a rugged old girl like this needs her protection. Hey, Marshal. It's getting around chow time. Maybe I better knock off and light off that galley. What do you mean, light off the galley? You know the exact order of cold chow for lunch? Yeah, I know. I'll but... tell you when to knock off. This is a rotten job for a ship's cook. Maybe the pharmacist mate will put you on the sick list. Hey, how about that, McConnell? Sure. As soon as we finish up here, I'll lift you over, Cookie. Hey, you're a big help. Come on, pass him, Chance. <laughs> hey. You got lots of good chow board, Cookie? You like porterhouse steak, fried chicken, and roast turkey? You ain't gonna be in trouble. How about pickled pig's feet? Or case them. Oh. Hey, remind me when we get back, Cookie. I want to marry you. Yeah. Come on, quit thinking of your bellies and think of those dudes who need this high-flying ammunition. Where are we gonna unload it, Chief? Well, now, the captain hasn't confided in me yet, sonny. But I'll give you two guesses. Who do you think needs it the most? You mean Corregidor? That's right. Uh, you really think we don't care about them guys? What kind of loves do you think we are? Just the ordinary kind, Cookie. Kind that needs a little reminder every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he ain't such a bad guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> when he ain't breaking your back. <laughs> Stuart, tell Mr. Clark, Mr. Gunn, and Mr. Hoffinger I want to see them in the wardroom right away. All right, Captain. Just put them in the phone locker. Mr. Gunn, Captain St. Please come wardroom. Thank you. Mr. Clark, Captain St. Please come wardroom. Well, oh, thanks. I'll be there right away. Here's the latest chart of the minefield off Corregidor. Better keep that locked up until we get underway. Well, this chart is six months old, Captain. Well, it's the latest available. The Army says they have no information to indicate that this channel through the minefield has been changed. They're going to check by radio. The way things are going out there, they have no way of knowing from one day to the next where anything's going to be. Well, this is going to be a tricky channel to get through on a dark night with everything blacked out. Well, I ask you to come in for one more check on the deballasting. You satisfied with it now? It's all okay now, Captain. The base has removed 20 tons of lead blocks from around the keel. It'll just about compensate for the weight of this ammunition. I want to carry every round that we can get aboard. Get rid of more lead, if necessary. Captain, what do we do about ballast after we unload this stuff at Corregidor? Yeah, it'll be 20 tons light, too light to dive. I know it. Let's deliver the goods first, and then we'll worry about ballast later. Right now, I'm interested in ammo. Yes, sir. We're cramming it in. We're putting it in the passageways, lashing it to the overhead. We're even putting the small arm stuff in your personal lockers. Nobody minds, I hope. <laughs> nice going, Fritz. Uh, just don't cover up my toothbrush, will you? How soon do you have it all aboard? We'll have it down the hatches and secure it for sea by midnight. Good. And I'll tell the Admiral we'll be ready to get underway tomorrow. On January 12, 1942, the USS Trout departed for Pearl Harbor. She was a floating keg of dynamite. No one worried about what a torpedo would do to her. It was a mine that bothered the crew. The captain was Lieutenant Commander Frank W. Fenno of Westminster, Massachusetts. The executive officer was Lieutenant Albert H. Clark of Norway, Maine. The engineering officer was Lieutenant Frederick A. Gunn of Kansas City, Missouri. Lieutenant Frederick J. Harfinger of Albany, New York was the gunnery officer. And Maurice L. McConnell of Honolulu was pharmacist's mate. They zigzagged, trusted to luck, and made plans for the big hurdle. 
Where's the chart? Marcus is bringing it now. Hurry up with the chart. Here's what I want to do. We'll dive right at this point at daybreak and head straight toward the entrance to the minefield during the day. Well, I'll keep our position on these peaks. Then we'll know exactly where we are after dark. Yeah. Dark, I want to surface one mile from the entrance to the minefield and run straight in. That way we shouldn't have too much trouble finding the channel. How much light are we going to have? No moon and cloudy. It'll be dark on the inside of a cow. We'll have to make these two turns here and here at exactly the right point. If we don't, we'll be in the minefield. Well, Fort Drum will give us a good bearing to turn on here. And the right tangent of Corregidor is pretty sharp for this one. Fritz will take bearings from the bridge. He's been in here before. You'll get the dope if I can see him. You've been taking your vitamin A? Double doses, ever since I got my first look at this chart. My uh, night vision ought to be very sharp. It better be, boy. Well, that's not what's worrying me. What if the enemies mine this channel? You're pounding on the rock. We're one mile from the entrance, Captain. I'm going to surface now, Al. Be ready to take her down again in case we have to dive. Aye, sir. Ready to surface. <laughs> dark. Tell the captain we're entering the channel in the minefield right now. Bridge. We're entering the channel now. Very well. Steer a steady course. Steady course, Ellsworth. Steady on 133. I'm nearing the first turn. I need a bearing at Fort Drum. I can't see it, Captain. Give us another flash. One more, just one more flash. It should be a 507 true. I'm looking there, Pop, but I can't see it. There's a mine bouncy down the hall. Wait a minute, Fritz, I think I see it. to 180 now now right full rudder steady on course 180 captain don't bother us now Marcus go on down below if I ever get out of this I'm gonna give everything I own to the poor and I mean it <laughs> it'll be easy for you cookie you ain't got nothing <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to tell me, Marsters? Two mines just bumped down the hull. Uh, what? Well, I tried to tell you, Captain. I 
go ashore to see the general. Don't you boys do anything that will keep us from diving at daybreak. Make nice meat for those bombers. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Somebody, Cookie, these guys are starving. Yeah, you're right. How you doing, Al? Maybe good, maybe bad. We got some fuel oil. Marshall swam over to a second barge and hooked up the oil line. Swam over? Yeah, it was a great piece of work, but I got problems. When we get this ammunition off, the ship's going to be too light to dive. So let's get those sandbags we were talking about, 20 tons of them. I'll fix that. You come with me, McConnell. I know this island like a book. Here you are, Bob. Here's a canned ham. Here's one for you. Eat hearty. Here you go. Live it up. Here, buddy, you take this roast. You like porterhouse? <laughs> okay. There you are. These ought to do it. Yes, sir. They're close to the ship. Go back and ask Mr. Gunn for a working party. Yes, sir. Stand where you are. Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Halfinger from that submarine over there. This is our pharmacist mate, McConnell. Don't you know you're liable to get shot wandering around like this? Oh, we have to have some sandbags to ballast our ship, and I figured on taking this pile here. You did, huh? Well, what do you think we use to stay alive around here? These are our only supply. We might give you our food if we had any, but if you touch any of these sandbags, you'll have to fight every man on this rock. It's that bad, huh? It's worse. And if you're still around here when the shelling starts tomorrow, you'll find out. Well, McConnell, I guess we have to think of something else. Yes, Sorry, sir. Lieutenant. If they can't find some bags, we're gonna be in real trouble at daylight. We're whipping this ammo out pretty fast, Mr. Gunn. We'll be ready to start on those sandbags about a half hour. Nice going, Marston. Mr. Howlfinger's ashore looking for him. Oh, he's coming aboard now. We must have found him easy. Did you get him, Fritz? Get him? We almost got shot even asking about him. Every bag they have, they want for protection. What? Well, they got to give them to us. Yeah, well, they're willing to take us and the enemy on to keep them. Well, I don't blame the poor devils, but it sure puts the USS Trout in the end of a long limb. We get ourselves in this spot to bring them some ammo, and this is a spot they leave us in. Say, I've been thinking, you know about those sandbags? Is there anything else that might help? Well, not unless you've got some cement bags or rocks. Oh, we're using both of those for shoring up the fortifications. Seems to me you guys ought to be grateful enough to give us some of that gold bullion they sent you up from Manila. Man, you must be crazy. Hey, hey, gold. Gold, it's perfect, heavy as lead. But we're being paid to guard it, not give it away. Why, it's millions, a regular treasury. Yeah, but you can't spend it. You can't eat it or shoot it. And we need it to dive tonight. I'm afraid the general wouldn't. Say, how much do you need? 20 tons. 20 tons will do it. Well, I think there's two tons of gold bullion and more than 18 tons of silver pesos. Plenty of silver. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go talk to the general. Oh, all right, but it wasn't my idea. Nice going, McConnell. Hey, this wasn't my idea. I was just kidding, Mr. Harlfinger. This is your idea. This is the last of it. Tell the rest of them upstairs that's all I can give them. If I get many more, we'd starve to death before we got back to Pearl. Besides, I've got a lot of work to do. Kill a few of them for me, huh? Ah, here, you guys take this turkey, huh? You give it away, Chow? Yeah, Cookie. These guys are starving. How much? Oh, not much. Just a couple dozen turkeys, some steaks, chicken. Here, buddy, you take this chicken. We got plenty. Oh, no! Get him back! Get him back! All right, stack them right here, fellas. We haven't got room for the boxes below. Be careful, that Johnny. We may have to eat it before we get back. What'd you say? Uh, nothing. Not a thing. Here comes another house and lot. I just see myself on River Street with just one of these. Oh, that Margie. Hey, let me see them before you pass them forward. I gotta keep a record of all of this. Money bag coming down. Heavy! 
Here comes a bundle of old papers. Old papers? What kind of ballast do they call this? Bank of the Philippines, United States government bonds, par value three million five hundred thousand. Oh, they're sending us everything. Yes, Sorry, fellas, right, come on, snap it up. Let's get this stuff. Oh, we're running out of room, sir. Every compartment is loaded. Well, there's not much more in the truck. This is the last load. Oh, here comes the captain. The general thinks this is a good idea. <laughs> there must be a billion dollars here. Billion? Ten billion. Right now, it all looks like ballast to me. How long before it's all loaded? Another 20 minutes ought to do it. You all set out? Top top of the fuel, ready to go at any time. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Clear of the minefield again, the trout headed for the East China Sea. Figuring she might as well deliver a few torpedoes where they'd do the most good before heading home. Meanwhile, the high brass was not yet aware of the nature of the trout's ballast, or they would have had apoplexy. Contacts, Las Vegas was just penny ante. I'll bet a hundred. Here's your hundred. And up you two. What's the matter, Cookie, you broke? No, are you kidding? It's the first game I've ever been in where every nickel I had wasn't showing. I haven't had time to consult my broker, but a uh, hundred shares of Asiatic Petroleum should cover the bet. I think I got some of that. There's your 200, and I'll raise you five. Is she had a controlling? It's a 4,000 ton freighter. Torpedo tube set. Tube ready. Up the scope. Is your bear 014? There she is. Mark bearing. Bearing zero one one. Set. Fire. <laughs> Tell the captain it was a stuck poppet valve. Everything's okay now. Captain, we had a stuck poppet valve. Everything's all right now. We just floated alone. One thing you're good for. Cook, Captain say please come wardroom. Well, oh, coming. You sent for me, Captain? Sure did. What's the matter in the galley? Since when is bread and gravy and cherries a meal? Well, Captain, I... I guess I'll have to tell you. I'm in a bind. When I saw those poor devils over on Corregidor, I just couldn't help but give them something to eat. You felt the same way too, didn't you, Captain? Sure, nobody blames you for that, but how much did you give them? Well, sir, I knew how much we had. I figured it wouldn't hurt us to tighten our belts a little bit. And then I find out that Crespo's up forward doing the same thing. Captain, we're practically out of chow. What? Captain, here's an urgent dispatch from the force commander. State Department strongly objects risking your ballast. Depart area for Pearl at best possible speed. How do you like that, worrying about money at a time like this? Oh, well, at least we'll be eating better in about 10 days. In, in the meanwhile, Captain, I hope you like bread and gravy. <laughs> Funny how important you get when you come into a little money. Yeah, usually they send a little PC boat out to guide us, but look at this. Now look at that. Well, so long as they keep our trigger happy guys off us, I won't complain. 
As Trout arrived at Pearl Harbor, she was met by the usual Navy crowd. When the unloading of the millions was finished, the amount delivered checked exactly with totals called exactly with totals called for in radio dispatches from Corregidor. The paperwork was signed and completed, and the crew of the Trout went off to the Royal Hawaiian Hotel for two weeks of well-earned rest. while a relief crew outfitted the ship. <laughs> hey, have some leave, what it, boy? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take me this whole next patrol to recuperate. <laughs> Say, uh, I didn't see you with Margie. What happened to her? Did she go back to the States? No. No, she found some chief off the Redfin. He makes a little more dough, you know. Yeah, dames are all alike. Find a guy that makes the most dough and... Well, we can't keep it on board. What are we supposed to do with it? Well, it looks like we're stuck with a gold break. Same answer? Yeah. All the stuff they were supposed to have received has been delivered. All the paperwork's closed. Nobody will take it. But the Navy Department failed to agree that the matter was closed. Dispatches flashed back and forth across the ocean between Hawaii and Washington. The case of the golden bar pyramided into a headache of red tape. Nobody seemed to want that golden bar, but somebody had to be stuck with it. Well, Captain, they finally found a goat. There's a cruiser leaving tonight for the West Coast. We are authorized to turn over this gold brick to her supply officer, and he will take it from there. You don't say. It's all yours, Fritz. And the supply officer doesn't even know about this yet. Just get it out of here. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the commanding officer of the USS Trout on this memorable patrol, Rear Admiral Frank W. Fenno, known since his Naval Academy days as Mike. Hi, Mike, how are you? Good to see Good you. To you. Mike, this experience is certainly one <coughs> that will be told in your family for generations to come. Well, it wasn't what you might call routine. You're one of the few people alive who have bumped into mines and lived to tell about it. It must have given you quite a scare. On the bridge, we were so busy trying to navigate through the channel in the minefield that we didn't realize we'd hit anything. All I can say is that the shock of finding out about it later was bad enough. How did it feel to be up to your elbows in gold? In one way, it felt mighty good. It made wonderful ballast when we really needed it. Otherwise, it was a real headache. Well, Mike, you've had a truly remarkable experience. It's a real honor to have had you with us. Good to be here, Tommy. Well, thank you. I regret to say that the USS Trout was lost later in the war. Some of those who made the patrol you have just seen went down with her. Among them was Lieutenant Commander A.H. Clark, our engineering officer, who was then her skipper. I hope that you will come aboard with us again when the silent service brings you another outstanding submarine story. <laughs>